Starship Troopers is a somewhat forgotten movie of the late 1900s that garnered a certain cult-like following, not unlike The Breakfast Club or Dead Poet Society. With gorgeous spray tan men and women and the blondest, brightest Busey constantly on screen, you find it hard to look away due to the charm and appearance of this surprisingly underrated cast. If you can ignore the stiff line delivery and somewhat predictable plot devices, you can really see how this movie is a satirical masterpiece, taking digs at extremism, nationalism, and even just military operations in general. I'm doing my part. The movie takes place well into the future and focuses on the Federation, which is a military superpower made up of citizens, those who are loyal, unlike civilians, who are not and are generally looked down upon. But the real secret to this movie isn't the fact that Mr. Krabs has a major part Put your hand on that wall! or that we get a lengthy co-ed shower scene, but the fact that it was ahead of its time by more than two decades. But what does that mean? In the gaming world, first-person shooters that funnel large onslaughts of enemies at the player in waves or stages are often called horde shooters. In many cases, the player navigates a level varying in complexity with a series of smaller tasks to do throughout and repeats until they either die or get sick of winning all the time. These games can be a great way to wind down after a hard day at work or school because all you really need to do is move and shoot. There are some tactics involved, but not many. While there have been a plethora of titles that have worked their way into infamy within this genre, there hasn't been a lot of innovation. Run, shoot, loot. Run, shoot, loot. It's the same legacy titles we all grew to love, which is fine, but after a while, there's not much left to do, and in many cases, these games get played for a few hours or even days, and then go back on the shelf to collect dust until you feel the itch to shred some zombies or cops or headless dudes with bombs in their hands. That is, until Helldivers 2 came along. Without Starship Troopers, Helldivers 2 is just another horde shooter with a few quirks. Another Left 4 Dead, another Nazi Zombies, or Payday 2. Without the movie, no one can appreciate the lengths to which developers went to create such a game. Helldivers 2 has been the hot topic as of late, and justifiably so. Simply put, it's a modern dynamic horde shooter that nerfs the meta in the name of keeping things interesting. It even comes with a dedicated dungeon master. Yes, the developers over at Arrowhead went so far as to give one man authority over the fate of the entire Helldivers 2 universe. Hi, Joel. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. How does this all tie into Starship Troopers? I'm glad you asked. When playing Helldivers 2, you are a citizen of Super Earth, whose sole job is to help defend the galaxy from being overrun by roided up T-1000s called automatons, and these disgusting yet overwhelming bugs called Terminids. Both enemies are attacking different sections of the galaxy, and your job is to liberate each planet and instill managed democracy. Democracy. <sighs> using extreme genocide as a vehicle. <laughs> oh, <fuck yeah. laughs> Courtesy of President Barack f***ing Obama, dude. You get cool weapons and armor, plus these awesome support packages called stratagems, basically limited supply kill streaks from COD, all while getting some of the goofiest dialogue you can imagine to accompany your character. Wait, liberty, my life! Oh, also, you're super expendable. Like, you don't even see your character's face. I've heard that's so you don't get attached in any way, but I could be wrong. Instead, you name your ship something awesome and spend time grinding to unlock better weapons and armor. Did I mention you don't technically need to buy the battle pass? Actually, there's two of them, but you can use the earned currency from the one to buy the other, but more on that later. If this game didn't have Starship vibes, it likely wouldn't have taken off with any of the memes, nor developed the cult following that it did. People love this game. I love this game. It has a certain charm that's so over the top it's irresistible. But with audiences primed by a baby-faced Neil Patrick Harris and a still bald Dean Norris, they're conditioned to love it even more. That is until the sweats found out about it. Shortly after release, these unemployed mouth breathers started demanding the developers add a PvP mode, to which the developers told them kindly to kick rocks. PvP in a game like this would spell trouble because it would distract from the main point, cooperative liberation in the name of democracy. Don't we already have enough average FPS games? I mean, yes, we have some neat takes on existing genres like the finals twist on Arena VRs, but then we have stuff like CS2, which is really just updated CSGO. We have Valorant, which is basically basically CS for kids who can't aim. We have COD, which is the same game it's always been, and the list goes on and on and on. Let's face it, major developers have gotten lazy in recent years. They know they can wave a shiny new battle pass in front of you, the customer, and you'll buy it every single time. The spirit of gaming has fallen by the wayside thanks to, unfortunately, 
Fortnite. While it was a brilliant innovator in the gaming world in 2018, changing how we saw competitive shooters forever, it also damaged the consumer gaming market irreparably. Which is why Helldivers 2 is so different. You can't pay your way through it. You have to grind and suffer and die and die again and airstrike and die to an airstrike and again and again and again and do it so much that you actually forget that you even cared. Because it's just that fun. It brings back what we used to love as kids when playing split-screen Battlefront 2 on a friend's CRT TV. A sense of camaraderie and accomplishment, which is all we really want. That and good community support. Which, speaking of, as of a couple days ago, the developers released a patch to update the current meta to make it more balanced. Even though the PvP sweats grumbled away and went back to being toxic on Overwatch 2, some competitive gamers stayed behind and the community suffered for it. But how bad was it? Well, People were getting kicked in higher level missions for not running what used to be the current meta, which was the breaker shotgun, shield backpack, and a railgun. These weapons made higher level- I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this game has nine difficulties, ranging from sucking your thumb easy to bleed your eyes out from stress so hard. Also called hell dive. <laughs> Anyway, random players would essentially be bullied into complying with this loadout arrangement or just be kicked and thus be prevented from getting higher tier loot, which helps unlock cooler stuff that can be very helpful. And the developers didn't like that. So barely a month after the initial release, they nerfed the sweats toys and made the game more balanced in terms of weaponry, which is exactly what developers should be doing. It's about having fun and trying new things. It's not about building the optimal loadout and making everything easier for yourself. For example, hot take, but I love the flamethrower and they just buffed it by 50%, so I'm even more excited to use it because it's a flamethrower. Games like this are hard to come by. It feels like everything is monetized to death because most modern companies are run by businessmen and not gamers, people who actually play and enjoy their own product. And that's what we needed. Times have been a bit weird since COVID, with an unstable market, a housing crisis, and at least in the US, politics hanging on by a thread. We need something like this to not only give us a distraction, but hope and a reminder that we can have good games. We just need to speak the language of these larger companies by, in so many words, voting with our money. Stop pre-ordering games, stop buying loot boxes and battle passes that you're not gonna complete anyway, and support a small developer. And most importantly, do it in the name of managed democracy. Democracy. So, did I miss anything? What have you enjoyed the most or hated about Helldivers 2? Let me know down below and don't forget to like the video. After all, I'm trying to make a living here, so help me out.